is part 73 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss output cache attribute in MVC. Output cache attribute is used to cache the content returned by a controller action method so that the same content does not need to be generated each and every time the same controller action method is invoked. Let's understand this with an example. We'll be using this table TBL employee for this demo. Let's flip to Visual Studio. The first step is to add an ADU.NET entity data model based on that table. So let's add a new item. Click data under install templates, ADU.NET entity data model. And let's name it sample data model. We want to generate our model from the database. Click next. And we want our connection string to be saved as sample DB context within the web.config file. Click next. This is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views, and stored procedures. And we are interested in this table TBL employee, so let's select that. And we want our models to live in models namespace. Click Finish. So this should generate an entity with name TBL employee. But let's change the name to employee. Let's save all the changes and let's build the solution so that this employee entity is compiled. The next step is to add a controller. So let's right click on the controllers folder, add a controller, and let's name this home controller. And let's use this template, MVC controller with read slash write actions and views using entity framework. And the model class is going to be employee. And the data context class is going to be sample DB context. Let's click add. So this should generate the home controller and all the views. Index, create, edit, delete details. And let's make some modifications to the index action method within the home controller. Now look at this. This index action method is returning the list of employees that are present within this table. But since this table is so small, this action method is going to return that list in less than a second. So let's introduce some latency. And to do that, I'm going to use system.threading.thread.sleep. So we are basically making the thread sleep for some time. And we have to provide the time in milliseconds. So let's make it sleep for maybe 3 seconds. So 3,000 milliseconds. All right. And let's make some changes to the index view. Now, within the table, in the first row, I want to print the date and time at which the employee list is retrieved. OK, so let's use a TD and set the column span to 4. Because every row in this table has got 4 rows. And I want the width of this table to span across those 4 TDs. You know, we are setting the column span to 4. And to print the current date and time, um, you know, we can use at date time dot to string. Date time dot now dot to string. Let's print a message here saying uh, employee list retrieved at. And if we want to print that at symbol, we have to escape that with another at symbol. So at that date and time. Uh, and let's put this inside a bold tag. All right. And then let's use a div tag so to set the style attribute. And let's set font family to area. And let's move this closing tag to the end. And the final modification is to set a border for our table. So let's set the border. All right, with all these changes, let's build the solution. And let's fire up a browser and navigate to the index action within the home controller. And the first time, this index action method is going to take at least three seconds because we made the thread sleep for three seconds. And every subsequent request is also going to take three seconds. Look at that. I click this refresh button. Look at that. It's still processing. And the data is returned at that point of time. So I hit Enter. Look at that. We got the data now. So every time we make a request, you know, to slash home slash index, this index action method with the home controller will be invoked and it's going to take at least three seconds to return the data. 
Now, if we cache the data, then this method will not be executed every time you know a request is made. Instead, the data will be simply returned from the cache, so the performance of the application will be much better. So how do we cache data using output cache attribute? So output cache, and we need to specify how long you want to cache uh, the application data. You definitely don't want that to be remaining in the cache indefinitely. And to specify uh, the duration, we use you know this duration parameter, and you specify the time in seconds. Okay, so duration equal to, let's say I want to cache this data maybe for 10 seconds. Okay, so let's build the solution. Now the first time we make a request, it's going to take at least 3 seconds. It retrieves the data and then it caches that and gives it to the view and the view is uh, send it back, uh, sent back to the client. So the next time when we make a request to the same action method, since the data is already cached, it's going to return that from the cache. So it shouldn't take three seconds. So first time we hit, so it's processing now. Let's look at the time. Okay. Now if I make another request, look at that, I get it right away and the time doesn't change. So the data is cached and we instantly get the data back because the method doesn't need to be re-executed every time. But once the cache expires, you know, the method needs to be, look at that, it's still processing. The method needs to be re-executed and then, you know, the data is written. But then within 10 seconds, if I make a request, I'm going to get the data from the cache. So this controller action method is processed at most every 10 seconds. All right. So here we are caching, you know, the entire view here. Okay. Now, is it possible to cache only a portion of a view? Absolutely. And one of the ways to do that is by using child action methods. So let's see how to do that with an example. Let's get rid of this thread.sleep statement and let's also remove this output cache attribute from the index action method. And let's have another action method. Let's make a copy of this. And let's say I want to return, you know, total count of employees. So let's call this get employee count. And then all this is going to do is return a string. And what is it going to return? Simply employee count equals, so it's going to return this message. Employee count is equal to, so how are we going to get employee count? Uh, we can use db.employees.count function. So db.employees is going to return us all the employees, but I want the count of them. Convert that to string. And then let's also print. Uh, the date and time. So employee count is equal to whatever at whatever date and time. So at and how do we print date and time? Date time dot now dot to string is going to print the current date and time. All right. And then let's decorate this with child action only attribute so that nobody can make a direct URL request to this action method. And then we want to cache the data that is returned by this action method. So I'm going to use output cache attribute. And then let's specify the duration. I want to cache this for 10 seconds. And then we need to invoke this action method within our view. So within the view, just after the closing tag of the table, let's include two break statements. And then we need to invoke this child action method and how do we do that at html dot action helper can be used and all you need to do is specify the name of the action method what is the name of our action method get employee count all right with all these changes let's build the solution let's come and navigate to the index view So look at that, we have the employee count here. Now every time I refresh this view, this time changes, but not the time here, because that portion of the view is cached. So to cache a portion of a view, we can make use of you know, 
the child action methods. Now, is it mandatory that we have to use child action methods to cache a portion of a view? Not necessarily. Even if you, if I remove this child action only attribute, build the solution. Look at the date and time. Now, if I refresh that once again, look at that. This changes but this doesn't change so we are still able to cache portions of a view so I refresh that again look at that the time on the top changes but not this time which is displaying the employee count okay so we don't necessarily have to use child action only attribute to cache a portion of a view uh, but if we don't use child action only then somebody will be able to invoke this public method within a controller by issuing a URL request. Okay, so if you want to prevent that from happening and if you want to cache portions of a view, then we can make use of child action only. But if you want to um, cache, you know, portions of a view at the same time, if you also want to allow users to be invoking this action method directly, then you don't have to decorate that with child action only attribute. And we have discussed about caching concepts in parts 119 to 128 in ASP.NET tutorial. Those concepts are still applicable for ASP.NET MVC. So if you're new to ca caching, I strongly recommend to watch those videos. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.